Nation is back. Wild week, Coach. It's wild. You know what, though? That's the wildest every week, week we've ever every, had. every week is wild, isn't it? Heat Shoyer, Jim Gazzola, <laughs> Polk Nation is here. And we've got baseball coming up, softball 4-1, and one, basketball coming back from a 22-point deficit to win a game, track athlete going crazy on the hurdles. What more do you want? It's a great day. It's, it's a great time to be a poke right now. Keep it rolling. <sighs> <laughs> All right, let's let's start with okay. uh, you reinstated the track coach. I did. Mm-hmm. Brendan Gilroy. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, the, the process and the investigation went mm-hmm. through. Can you say anything? Because a lot of people had a lot of wild things out there. It wasn't anything like some of the rumors that were out there. I'll just say this. It, it, you know, I heard a lot of the rumors, too. And, and you know, I just kind of, you know, I couldn't say anything. And, and um, But it wasn't anything. Um, it wasn't what a lot of the rumors were. Or yeah. it would not have been reinstated, obviously. Um, but, uh, you know, there's policies and procedures that uh, from a state level. Um, that you have to follow, and part of the administrative leave for Coach Gilroy was to uh, to ensure an integrity of, a, of an investigation. Um, had, was another issue with another uh, member of the track program, and uh, you know that uh, that member is no longer here. And um, but you know, to, to, in order to do it right, in order to uh, protect the integrity of, um, of of an investigation, and also um, to follow policies and procedures, um, you know. Uh, that administrative leave was uh, was warranted and needed to happen, and uh, you know we got through it all. And uh, Coach Garroy's back, and um, and we're, I'm really proud to to have him back. And we should also mention Morgan Talley set a twice yeah. set the school record in the 60 hurdles mm-hmm. indoors over the weekend at the Vanderbilt meet. Um, tracks off to a great start, though. Indoors. They are, they are. And then you know I I, I tell you what I'm. Really, really impressed um, with the uh, the track program, and um, you know when you go through something like this that we did in those last couple of weeks, you find out the fiber and and the real character of the of the kids and of the program, um, and that program's fiber and character is really really strong. And um, uh, you know I'm, I'm what Coach Gilroy has built. Um, I'm really impressed with and, and excited to uh, you know for this program to continue moving forward. I, this week it was determined that through a buyout, through a series of financial buyouts, Texas and Oklahoma will now be in the SEC a year early, mm-hmm. 2024. You have a game with Texas A&M um, in 2024. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, you haven't heard on that game yet, but they're going to go to nine games of the conference. I would assume that your game would be the easiest of the buyouts. But let, let's put that aside that we don't know what's going to happen there yet. But what about the overall look as conferences get bigger and play these nine games do you still see a place for FCS games in F- against FBS? Yeah, I mean, um, but it's, it's going to be harder. I mean, there's no question about it. I think that's something that, um, you know, we've discussed as a, as a department. Um, it, th- those games are going to be harder to get, but um, there's going to be still be opportunities. It's just going to take a lot more work to get them done. But, um, uh, you know, like we're, we're very, very close to securing, um, you know, uh, two more um, – guarantee games with LSU into the future. We're close to that. Just actually um, waiting on a contract for, for two more games. Um, we have a verbal agreement. Um, so they're hard to get. They're, they're going to be harder to get, um, but not impossible. But it's good that you're getting the games that are drivable. Oh, for sure. 100%. And I also think you have to look at it, too. Instead of maybe playing a Florida, <coughs> you might have to play a Lafayette um, and a Tech. Yeah. You know, and, and play two of those, like a Rice people like that to try to get there. But obviously, there's, um, there's an amount of money that our budget needs. Um, and until we can, you know, fill this, this stadium up, you know, week after week, um, you know, we're going to have to, you know, we're going to have to play those games to get to where we want to go. Yeah, I, I just, I wonder about as the conferences kind of pull apart, where you guys slide in for the next couple of years as they build back up there. Because they have so many games that are guaranteed that are more money right. than you, that where you fit in, but you still get the check if you... Well, yeah. Listen, I mean, if we, if they want to write me write us a check for, you know, half a million dollars and not play the game, I mean, you know, that's not all bad either. Come back and get a home game. <laughs> hey, you, you've done it before. You played LSU on nine plays, and you that's got a true. rain out, and you got a check. So that's exactly right. So that didn't hurt. You ended uh, up being ten and zero that year. That's right. So you that's can exactly say you had LSU on the on the schedule, and you went ten and zero. That's right. <laughs> Unbelievable. What? That's true, though. It, it is, is true. true. All right, softball four and one start. Uh, baseball starts this week. Huge time of year for this university because those are two premier leagues, not only or two premier programs, not only locally but nationally. 
They are. Um, you know, we've, we've talked on this show the last couple of weeks about the programs that, you know, um, James Langino and Justin Hill has built in softball and baseball. Um, and you're right, they are, uh, they're the flagship programs right now for our department. Um, and, uh, and nationally, they're starting to get recognition. And um, it, it's exciting. I, I think that both of those guys have a great culture. Um, obviously, we're going to have, um, you know, the stash on here. What's that Trey um, Overs on? <laughs> we're going to have him on here momentarily. But um, I'm just excited about uh, where these programs are, and, uh, and it's, it's great to, uh, to get their seasons off and running. The stash. The we're going to give him a nickname. He hasn't even appeared I it, yet. Man. I love it. It's just like Tombstone. Are you going to go to a baseball game this year for a little longer? Well, come on, man. I'm always there. You're there, and then you're gone. No, I, and I come back. They're, they're, they're three hours. I have to go to the bathroom once in a while. They are three hours. <laughs> when we come back, uh, designated hitter and seven-time Cowboy right. Trey Overton. We'll be back on Poke Nation after this. Welcome back to Poke Nation. Wow, we have Trey Obergon, okay. a.k.a. The Stash. Go. Welcome, man. The Welcome stash. to Poke Nation. Appreciate it. The stash. Thank you all for having me. The Stash, it's awesome. Yeah. It's awesome. It's an old, <laughs> it looks like an old West gunfighter. <laughs> yeah. Or a barber or a bartender, doesn't he? Uh, Wyatt Earp. Wyatt Earp. Yeah, the Wyatt Earp. You you see, oh, yeah, yeah. Tombstone. one of my favorite movies, honestly, is Tombstone. Hmm? You seen Tombstone? Oh yeah. Yep. Oh yeah. There were two I'm, Wyatt Earp movies I'm your, at the same time. I'm your Huckleberry. I love that. But there's two Wyatt Earp movies at the same time. <laughs> it is true. It's so. true. Well, listen. Welcome to Pope Nation. Appreciate it. Um, okay, we get started this weekend. Yep. Creighton coming in opening weekend. Mm -hmm. Where's the team at? Talk about where uh, where you think we're at and. Uh, I know you guys have got to be excited to actually play against somebody else. Absolutely, absolutely. No, we're we're really excited. Uh, you know, especially after uh, last year coming up short in conference. I mean, you know, we're all we're all eager. You know, we're mm -hmm. we're eager to start. Uh, it's a new team. I um, mean, we're, we're we're really excited. We're excited. We got a lot of good guys coming back. Uh, you know, got a couple guys. You know, coming back from injury. That's not gonna. Not, not really going to hurt the, the year, uh, maybe at the beginning, but, mm -hmm. you know, looking at the back end of it, you know, we should, as long as we all stay healthy, uh, it's looking really good, yeah. really promising. So so t let's talk about you for a little bit. Obviously, you've had an unbelievable career. Um, what was your off season like? What did you do um, that you always have done? And maybe what is something that was new that you did this off season to prepare for this year? Um, I'd say off season. I mean, when, when, I, when I think of off season. I think of really the fall uh, mm -hmm. for me, because uh, in the summer I was still coming back from my thumb surgery. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know, in the summer I do a lot of traveling, a lot of camping. Right. So uh, that's kind of my uh, get away for a little bit. Help but, your uh, mind, right? Right, absolutely. Yeah. I'm big into that. But uh, no, I mean, in the, in the off season, as far as the fall, I was really just trying to get stay, get and stay healthy. Mm -hmm. You know, because I've always battled uh, injuries here. Sure. So uh, really, just getting healthy, staying healthy, and really helping uh, the team kind of glue together. Uh, from my early beginning, just, you know, I've been the oldest one here. Right. So, you know, trying to get everyone to jump on board yeah. early and mm -hmm. just kind of be the, uh, you know, kind of be the, you know, the head honcho in the locker room, you know. Awesome. awesome. So. This is your seventh season on campus. <laughs> yeah, that's a long time. <laughs> but how much are you looking forward to it? Because the last two years you've gotten off to great starts yeah. mm -hmm. but gotten injured and not being able to see what the team has done. Mm -hmm. How much are you looking to be a part of the whole re the season? Oh, I'm, I'm, really, I'm really excited. I mean, I'm really excited. Uh, I mean – I mean, the, the more I play, uh, the more I enjoy it in, in different aspects of it. But uh, I'm, I'm really excited this year. You know, I guess the for me, I'm I think more of trying to stay healthy. You know, just as a whole, so I can you know experience a full year. You know, and not to worry about that. But uh, I'm really excited. I'm really excited to see what this year uh, has in store for us. Mm -hmm. I'm really the last season, you told me we we talked a little bit when you were out about what you were learning as far as watching the game from that perspective. Mm -hmm. How much can you take into that going into this year as a hitter, the kind of the mental aspect of what you learned by watching? Uh, definitely a lot, definitely a lot, especially just being with Coach Z uh, from the off offensive uh, perspective. Uh, I got to kind of see behind the lines of like, hey, how's this scouting report look? Like, how are we going to approach this guy uh, from a coaching standpoint? Because I really couldn't do anything on the field, obviously, because of my thumb. But uh, – I really just kind of learned a lot from from that perspective. Kind of made it our offensive uh, uh, plan as a whole just kind of make sense in my my opinion. And, and for me this year, kind of help under uh, you know relate it to the younger guys that don't really know or kind of new to the program. So it kind of me for me, I kind of help translate it and kind of help it uh, kind of make sense or, or glue for the guys that are new or kind of getting new to the program. Last year, the tournament was here. The championship series was here. You lost technically by game two by about a, a replay in about an inch yeah. and a half. Mm -hmm. yeah. How much does that kind of weigh on you guys, and how much does that fire you up? 
Um, I'll be honest with you, we don't really uh, think about it that much. You know, it's it's more of like you gotta have to use, use it as a chip on your shoulder for motivation. But I mean, to say that we talk about it, it it's kind of it's not it's kind of unspoken. Like, you know, we're kind of still bitter about it. Mm -hmm. You know, as a whole, but you know, it's it's not you can't hold on too much of the past. You have to keep moving forward. Yeah. You know, it's you know, kind of living the. You know, live where your feet are, be where your feet are, but kind of, you know, prepare for the future, you know. So let me ask you this. What, talk about what do you think this year's team strength is? Obviously, Coach Hill and this program has had a lot of success in all the years that you've been here. What is the strength of this year's team? I think the strength would be we're, real, we're older as, as, a, as a team, uh, especially the guys are going to be starting. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I'm 25, and we got the youngest guy in our offense just turned 21. So, I mean wow. – well, we have no one under 21 in our starting mm -hmm. nine uh, offensive lineup. And then pitchers, I mean, we might have one or two guys that are 20. Mm -hmm. So we don't have anyone that are 19. We don't really have any teenagers that, right. you know. So I would say experience and uh, guys that just have been here and uh, know how to know the offense, how the team runs. So I would say just experience and just age is really what, what we have going into this year as a whole. What's the rivalry like now with Southeastern? I, you know, Ever since I've gotten here, we've all it's always been, hey, we don't like Southeastern. So I've always had a bitter look or feeling towards Southeastern. So it's kind of, I guess, maybe just increased a little bit. But, I mean, that can't be our target, Southeastern, because we want to go farther, further and beyond. So no it's just it's just a, you know, a stepping stone we got to get through, and that's kind of how we see it and definitely how I see it. The, the thing about McNeese State baseball is kids want to come here to play. Brad Burkell said that last year. The culture here, how has that changed over the years you've been here? Uh, I mean, uh, getting those guys definitely have helped because uh, whenever I first got here, we only had one kind of one transfer from a big university. Now we're getting at least one or two guys. I mean, my roommate Burrell came from Michigan State. So, I mean, we're getting those guys that I guess we typically would have got a few years ago. Mm -hmm. And just those one or two guys are definitely helping us, whether it's in the bullpen, whether it's in our lineup. I mean, yeah. those guys are helping us. They do. They really do. Well, it's more in train. Talk about Burrell's entrance music <laughs> when we come back on Pope Nation. Back with Trey Aubergine the third. I, I gotta ask you this. I, I teased it a little bit, but Burrell Jones is your roommate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he has the best walk-up music I've ever heard, which was Girls Just Want to Have Fun. You, you said he's not keeping it? Well, I, at least opening weekend. Give us the opening weekend. The, the thing is, is like, so last year when he came in, it's like before we even talked about walkouts, he, he knew girls just want to have fun, it's going to be mine. He just he would play it every almost every day. And <laughs> any time it comes on, everyone knew, that's Burrell's song. So, like, I love how he just is – he's always confident. I'm not switching. It's girls want to have fun. So he came in this year, and I think he wants to do uh, Black Sabbath War Pigs. Mm. <laughs> I think he heard it this summer with his dad or something, and he's just like, this is this it. Is I want it. And, you know, about every other day you hear, wow, and you hear <laughs> the electric guitar, I'm like, he must be feeling having a good day, you know. It's what about you? What's your what's your, what's going to be to walk up? Music? Oh man, well, I think I think us position players are getting two, but at least one for sure. Um, I've always I'm a big Grateful Dead fan, so uh, mm -hmm. I, I love Althea, so mm -hmm. that's uh, always my groove groove song. But uh, I, I want to use uh, "Sweet Emotion" by Aerosmith. Oh, nice! I'm thinking oh, yeah. about using oh, that yeah, for yeah, a Friday yeah. night type uh -huh. thing. Mm -hmm. But uh, but yeah. What's with the old school stuff and the I love it. makeup music? I love it. That, I, I'm an old soul. I mean, maybe just because I'm 25, but uh, <laughs> playing a bunch of uh, college kids. But I mean, I've, I've always been a Grateful Dead fan. Uh, so I, I don't know. It's just my thing. Of, it's groovy. Uh, it's kind of kind of gives, gives me peace in the box before I get in there. Mm -hmm. So uh, and I like to be slow and smooth uh, in the box, especially if you're facing 90. You know, you want to. Oh, for sure. Down, you know? For sure. Talk about this, Trey. I mean, you know. Um, Jim mentioned the, the culture of the program before the break. Um, obviously, what Coach Hill and um, and his staff and the players. You know, I always say that you know <laughs> you're only as good as a, as what you who, what you surround yourself with from players and staff. Talk about the culture, though. Um, what is it that you um, what is it that you that has made the difference for you from a culture standpoint? Just just talk about what it's like to play baseball here. I would say the one thing that really stands out to me is Coach Hill has, has created a, 
a, not, not only the culture, but the family atmosphere as a whole. I mean, we have mentors outside the program, like the Griffins. We have the Robleses. I mean, th those are just a few to, to name, you know, many. But th those people are, especially for me, that is from 10 hours away, a couple right. states away. Like, when I first came in, those guys, those people are like, hey, like, we're your family now. Like, if you ever need anything, like. Yeah. So when I think that, that that's my intimate family, like, because I can't just go 10 hours down the right. road, you know. So, like. From me being away and just kind of establishing myself here, like those people really helped me just solidify myself, kind of give me a comfort and a home here. So, and whenever I was able to establish a home, get comfortable, I was able to thrive and kind of establish myself here. And you know, the other thing that's been really noticeable to me, Trey, is you know, and I've been around your program for the last three years, it's just the camaraderie of the team. It seems like you guys really, really enjoy. I mean, it's, I don't care what sport you're in, the, the years get long, mm -hmm. right? I mean, there's, it's a long year. It's, I mean, but you guys always, and you're in the dugout, seem like you have great camaraderie. Talk a little mm -hmm. bit about that. Well, especially if we're playing at least a three, four-hour game, you got to be pretty close for you to be in the dugout <laughs> that long, you know. But, uh, but, I mean, ever since I've gotten here, I mean, the, the locker room has always been just a, a great place. I mean, I mean, you'll have guys stay for an hour after. They'll get there two hours before, and that just shows, like, how close the guys are, how tight knit we are, just because I mean, you wouldn't want to stay in the locker room for no an hour after if you didn't like if you didn't mm -hmm. like the atmosphere. You know what I'm saying? So like, I, I would just say it's just it's comforting. I mean, we have freshmen come in that are timid, but they they walk in. You know, I might be seven years older. We have guys that are five year gap, but they walk in and we treat them just like a brother. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no hey, you're a freshman, you're a seventh year senior or whatnot. It's like no, no, you're on the team, you're a brother. You know, you, you know. You, you sacrifice just like we do. Yeah. You know, it's just like you treat me with respect, I'm going to treat you with respect. I'll tell you this, as a former athlete, and, and Jim, I, I know you were too, but the thing that you miss is the locker room. Mm. Is You know, I don't remember every game or every, you know, but I, I'm, the thing that I miss and always remember is the relationships and, like you said, sitting in the locker room, you know, just being dudes, mm -hmm. you know. and uh, it, But you can tell that that – culture and that those relationships carry on to the field with this team mm -hmm. absolutely and uh it's it's, it's crazy because uh like two weeks ago we had our alumni game and we i think we had at, at the end of it we had five former alumni come in and just hang out in the locker room for about an hour and a half after <laughs> for and sure. uh I, I bet some of the freshmen were like what are these guys doing? don't they want to go back their families or go mm -hmm. back home they're like mm -mm. no no no. these guys <laughs> miss this so much they want to see what we are doing after they want to hang out with us and be a part of it and it just shows like how big this culture is in the program before me and you know that's what it's going to be just how tight it is and how people still want to come back and be a part of it and be you know, just part of the locker room everything all that's the awesome. minor things it's, it's awesome when you got here seven years ago the, the program was just kind of starting out a little bit and you guys were picked for six seventh in the league and that now eight guys on the preseason team picked for number one do you like having the target on your back um i mean it is what it is, you know. I mean, the target's gonna be there regardless. But I mean, uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, you, you kind of take that with a little, uh, a little chip on your shoulder too, just because it, it just shows uh, the respect you have in the conference. You know, they, they, people, you know, put that target on you. Like, you don't put the target on yourselves. You know, someone has to right. give you that target. Right. So I mean, uh, it shows a little bit of respect of what we've uh, worked on in the off season. But I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's just show. You know, we got to get out there and play still. Yeah. You well. Know? You open up this week, and McNeese State opens up this weekend against Creighton mm -hmm. from Omaha, where the College World Series is. That's where you want to get. So, right. <laughs> right. good luck. We'll see. It's opening night is Saturday, Friday night, 6 p.m. at Joe Miller Ballpark. We'll see you then. We'll be back with Coach's final thoughts after this. I always have a soft spot for college baseball. I could never no, wear a really? mustache like that. I could never wear a mustache like that. Hey, I tell you what, what a great guy. I mean, he's not a kid, but what a gr I mean, what a great interview. Um, just, just a phenomenal guy, and uh, I, I really hope he stays healthy this yeah, year. Yeah, that's the whole thing. And uh, because he can, you know, he could be a real difference maker to get us um, over the hump. Well, that's and, what, I mean, really. He hasn't he hasn't played deep into seasons the last two years. Yeah, I know. And look how far you've gone. That's right. That's and right. that that's your number three hitter probably. He's a, a staple switch hitter, probably your best overall mm -hmm. hitter around. So that's if he stays healthy and they keep him a designated hitter. No question you, gotta, about you, it. you just lengthen your lineup a little bit longer. And how about the Grateful Dead walk up music and Grateful Aero Smith? I, well, I mean, I, I, I still I mean, think it's going to be hard for me to beat the girls just want to have fun, though, because <laughs> that just that cracked me up for three for innings, sure. so that would come out. All right.
basketball, 22 yep. points down. It was an unbelievable game, huh? You thought it was over, didn't you? Well, I thought it was going to be really, really hard for sure. But, <laughs> be nice. Uh, <laughs> you thought it was yeah. over. Um, you know, we, we, uh, but we found a way to win, and, and credit to the kids and, the, and, the, and Coach Aiken and his staff. It was, uh, it was a great win. And all of a sudden, in a strange, bizarre, jumbled conference, you're a game out of sixth place. Yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? It's crazy. <laughs> Win two games in yeah. a row, you're a game out of sixth yeah, place. I mean, the league is uh, – it just shows you, and that's, that's the thing that's exciting, but it's also, you know – Frustrating. Frustrating, because um, when you look at a Northwestern State um, first-year coach, they're at the top of the league. Who you beat by 15 here. For sure. You know, and you have a Southeastern and Nichols, all three of them in the, in the state, um, and they're ahead of us in the standings. And, um, you know, and it's such a jumbled league. So it, 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 it's exciting, but it's also frustrating that, uh, that we haven't had a better year up to this point. But there's a lot of basketball left. A lot of basketball left. A lot of basketball going to be played in Absolutely. here. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, but three out of five games remaining mm -hmm. in this gym. And then you get the tournament. So you do have your own opportunity to make or break your Absolutely. season. Absolutely. No question about it. And when it comes to women's basketball, two tough losses. Yeah. They seem to be going through the same thing the men did, not finishing games. Yeah. And I, I think there's, um, you know, I'm kind of disappointed with, um, you know, again, where, where we're at. Um, you know, I thought we would be a little bit farther along. But, um, you know, we had some injuries and we had some things going on in, in the program as well. But, uh you know, like we we're playing Southeastern here, and if we just if we get a defensive rebound, the game's over. And it's it's always those plays. You know, it's just one or two of those plays. I mean, we we're down two, we steal the ball with 20 seconds left, and have a a, a layup, and we just miss the layup. Yeah. You know. So, um, we're, but uh, but anyway, I, I you know, Coach Kennedy's done it for a long time. He's won everywhere he's been, and um, I'm I'm sure we'll play well doing that down the stretch. When you look at the overall school. Now the, we've talked about the money last year, last week with more money coming in and more opportunities and that. Can you project that out if football gets turned around and basketball gets turned around? What the possibility is here? Does that drive you, or does oh, that drive you crazy? Me, it drives me every day because you know you have to think about it. Where you know we we've turned the corner from a revenue standpoint, and foot in the two revenue sports, so to speak, um, have not you know. Um, just haven't been that good. If you, I mean, just just be blunt. They just haven't been that good. I mean, um, you know, basketball, be, having to host, being able to host the tournament, um, we need to be good. Yeah, like we need to be really good um, because right now, a true contender for sure. Because I mean, let, let, when you look at all the one bid leagues in the country, okay, there's not one institution that of all the one bid leagues that can say. We're going to host the conference tournament for the next four years. So, no matter what happens in the regular season. Yeah, so right now we are, you know, probably the best um, low mid-major job in the country because of that. And it, because there's no one else. I mean, not in Conference USA, not in the Sun Belt, not in the WAC. All the one-bid leagues that everyone talks about. Um, no one can say, I mean, UL can't say, hey, we're going to host a tournament. Yeah. Right? McNeese can't. And, um, and it makes this job a really, really good job, and we need to be really good. When it comes to the revenue of the tournament, mm -hmm. um, what do you get out of it besides the games here? And, and is there a real benefit to hosting the games as far as financially goes? We're going to find out. I mean, um, you know, the first, you know, the, 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 the first big lump sum of money um, is going to go to the conference, and that's typical, and then we're going to split yeah. everything after that. Um, concessions is going to be between us and Chartwells, so whatever our so the, the league doesn't get anything with concessions, um, you know. So I, I think there's going to be a little bit of an opportunity to make some money, but I, I think the big thing for us was being able to bring revenue into the city, and also for us to be able to host the games and and have ESPN on our campus three straight days. And it does give you a chance to kind of showcase the city for other Southland things to come here. Absolutely. I mean, there's been talk of Southland. Everything from a possible satellite office here mm -hmm. to everything. Well, how important is it to be kind of the linchpin to this to the conference? I think it's really important. I mean, that's. I mean, if you want to be frank, I mean, that's why we stayed. Um, you know, is that uh, we want to be the linchpin for the conference, and you know, um, and for us, you know, our expectations for every sport is you know to be in the top two or three. Um, moving forward, I mean, that, it, there's no reason why we shouldn't. The, when you again. 
When I came here, there was Stephen F. Austin, Abilene Christian, Sam Houston, Central Arc, Tick Price was at Lamar. Like, it was a different league. Yeah. Now, um, our expectations need to be greater than they've been before. We'll find out more as we go down the road on Poke Nation. We'll see you next week uh, after baseball begins.